Hey, we are so happy that you are here and gathered with us. My name is Brandon Phillips. I am uh, the pastor here. My wife was the, the beautiful lady that was singing up front in the black jean jacket. Together, God has made this place our home. We hailed from Houston, Texas, and I did not expect to ever move to Molino, Florida. We were headed to Manila in the Philippines to be missionaries, to go back on the mission field. And it was kind of a comical story because uh, whenever we moved here, of course, you got to put it on Facebook or it ain't true. And so I put, I put it on Facebook, we moved to Molino, and a friend of mine wrote, and he said, you, you, that's not, he said, you misspelt Manila. I was like, <laughs> no, I didn't. It's Molino. He's like, where's that? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> we just moved here. We did not expect God to do what he did. I think we had 31 voting members, about 17 people in service two and a half years ago. So if this is your first time or if you've never been here before or you're new, congratulations. Everybody here is new. We're all just getting to know each other. So, hey, give yourselves a hand. We're glad you're here. Come on, somebody. Also, I'm a long ways from fancy, and it's hot because there's too many of y'all in here, and some of y'all sweat. So I'm going to take this off. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be in the book of Matthew. Begin reading at the third chapter, 13th verse, Matthew 3, verse 13 through 17. If you got your Bible, say, I got my Bible. If you charged it up last night, say, that's me. Wood type or terabyte, whether you got it from Walmart or anywhere else. We just glad you brought it with you. Matthew chapter 3 verse 13. You got it? Say, I got it. You need a second? Say, hold up. Back of the Bible. I didn't even hear anybody say, hold up. I ain't got my hearing aid turned up though too, so I may not have heard you in the first place. Matthew 3 13. Here we go. Can we all stand for the reading of the word? We're a new style old school church. In other words, to stand in honor for the reading of the word. The Bible says simply this, then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him by saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? Jesus said, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, the Bible says he went up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. All across the house, would you bow your heads for just a moment. Heavenly Father, for the next portion of the service, for your word, God. I pray, dear God, that your word would do what your word does. Let it be a sword to those, a stone and a fire, God. Change us, God. I pray, dear Lord Jesus, we would become closer to you in obedience to you and your word. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Come on, you give the Lord one more hand clap of praise as you're being seated. Amen. Somewhere here this morning, there's a Baptist who's never been to a church like this, and they're like, man, these people stand up and clap a lot. Hey, you're welcome to. We're glad you are here. We make a lot of noise. We're a little loud. Hey, before I go any further, this is Baptism Sunday. Come on, somebody. Baptism Sunday. It's a great day. But let's be honest, not everybody likes water. <laughs> Not everybody likes water. And so I was doing baptism Sunday. I was, I was thinking about it, you know, not everybody. There was, there's, there's one person being baptized today came to me and they were like, hey, um, just so you know, don't like water. Don't like my face. So I said, it's okay. We'll pray. I'll, I'll hold you under till you stop bubbling. No, I said, it's, it's quick. It's down and back up again. But the, the thing is, is the title of this sermon today is simply this. And if you're taking notes, write it down. It's a fast pass when you get to heaven. It's this. It says, there is something in huh, the water. Now we live, come on, y'all. Most of us, we live here in Florida and we know. We know. I, I, I don't know about y'all, but y'all seen on social media recently, all the people from out of town showing up and they're like, they're sharks. I got six kids. It's like coming to my house and be like, there's kids in here. <laughs> no, we walk our sharks on leashes on the beach. Of course they're in the water. That's where they live around here. Welcome, welcome to Florida. Like, but we, they're, they're, the thing is, is that there's something in the water. And, and the truth is, is that water really matters. Water does matter. Matter of fact, for every single one of you here, 70% of your body is made up of water. 70% of your water. Now, for some of y'all, the type of water you drink, you're very passionate about. 
People get bougie. I'm from the 80s, okay? Like, I don't know how we survived. Like, if we cough, dust come out. Because we woke up in the morning time, we didn't have water. The only water we got is when we brushed our teeth. Come on, somebody. Like, we had a little carton of milk on the way to school, maybe one at lunchtime. We went to bed at night, took a bath. We just hoped that we absorbed enough to survive throughout the day. I don't know how it is that I got children that cannot walk across the living room floor without a $45 Stanley Cup. <laughs> Sorry, I got a lot of kids. I'm a little passionate about it. It's an expensive habit and hobby. It's a hobby. Let's be honest. It's a hobby. Stanley Cups. I, I, I have my grandfather's. I have my grandfather's Stanley. Y'all ain't never, some of them ain't even really, yeah, a real Stanley. Come on, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about. A real Stanley's got a cup that screws on the top of it. Come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All my men say amen. You know what I'm talking about right there? I have my grandfather's. I backed over it with a bulldozer. That's a manly way to lose a Stanley Cup right there. But you get, they, people get testy about their, 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 their water. They want to know what's the pH level. What's the pH level in your water? Is it, is it 12%, 12.5? At what point does it become caustic? Is it acidic? They want to know something about their water. They don't even know what pH stands for, but they want to ask you how much pH is in their water. Fiji water from the islands of Fiji. Actually, it's probably from some guy's bathtub in North Carolina, but they ain't going to tell you that. Dasani water, in case you're cheap. Come on, somebody. Like, if, as they say, they say Dasani is cheap. Whenever I was a kid, our water had a very specific flavor. It tasted like a water hose. Come on, somebody. Like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm my Gen X in before, y'all. Like, come on, somebody. Water, though, is mentioned in the Bible 722 times. Seven, that's a lot of times in the Bible. Matter of fact, water is mentioned more than faith. It's mentioned more than hope. It's mentioned more than prayer. It's mentioned more than worship. The Bible talks a lot about water. The Bible started with water in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. He said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty or with, it was void. He says, darkness was over the face of the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the... And y'all smart. Some of y'all even got it already. Before the lights were on, he was moving over the... Slowly but surely, y'all catching on. The Bible doesn't just start with water, but it also ends with water. Matter of fact, Revelation chapter 22, verse 7, at the very back of the book, he said, The Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the of life. Mm. Some people, though, they have not a fear of the water, but a fear of what's in it. I worked offshore, okay? I worked offshore for many years of my life. Matter of fact, until uh, I submitted to the call of the ministry. No, until, until I finally stopped running from God and, and started doing this, I, I worked offshore. And, and they, they, anybody here other than me ever worked offshore, worked out in the oil and gas industry, just me? Okay, there's one right there. Okay, two, there's a couple of them. Let me tell you something. They have these things that are like safety meetings, right? And they tell you what you're supposed to do in case things go sideways, okay? One of these instructions that look like this. If the platform catches fire, you're going to put on your safety vest, right, your, your, your life vest, take off your boots, keep your clothes on just so you can stay warm so you don't die of hypothermia. You're going to jump in the water. Listen, I'm white. I ain't that white. <laughs> I'm going to explain to y'all why, in case you ain't never been offshore. I have dropped pipe wrenches and watched sharks eat them. Whenever it hits the, that, they, they go after the splash. So they tell me, they were like, oh, you can jump in the water. I'm like, no, sir, I cannot. I will tear the door off this joint and float my happy little tail down the river, but I ain't about to jump off in the water. I, I, there is something about, there's something in that water, and I have seen, I know there's something, and it's not always the thing I can see. Sometimes it's something I can't see. I've caught a 14-foot tiger shark on a, on a crane before. I, you know, there's something in the water. There's something in the water, and I, I want to be careful. They made TV shows about it. Who all here other than me seen the show Shark Tank? Y'all seen it? Shark Tank. I, I love that show, man. It's so it's a great show. People trying to devour a person who just shows up trying to be successful. <laughs> it's it's the craziest thing. They all because they see value in you. Now they want to profit from you, so they eat you alive. It's kind of like real life, isn't it? <laughs> Fear of what's in the water. Now, I am not from Florida. I didn't come from y'all's beautiful, this beautiful blue-green water that we have now. I came from a place called Galveston, Texas. Galveston, Texas was the beach we went to, Gulf of Mexicans. You ever seen it? Water looks like chocolate milk. Right. My wife and I were having a conversation the other day. We were talking about we should take our kids back to Galveston so just so they can see, so they can appreciate because my wife, she wants to go to the beach every single day. She's like, praise the Lord, let's go to the beach today. And I go, okay, baby, we just went yesterday. You're, you burnt to a crisp. And she's like, no, let's go to the beach. And my kids are like, I don't want to go to the beach. And she wants to strangle them. She was like, you don't understand. I was raised in Galveston, Texas. There was some stuff in the water in Galveston. It was called bacteria, flesh-eating bacteria. Come on, somebody. 
Like it was some stuff in the water. We had, I, whenever I was a kid, there was things that I was, I was afraid of. I was afraid of quicksand. Anybody other than me thought that quicksand was going to be a bigger issue in life than what it actually is? I thought it was, a, I thought it was a problem. Leeches, leeches. I thought leeches were, like I, I figured if you got in water, you had to check your armpits because somehow or another you're going to have leeches underneath your armpits. Something about the water. I mean, there's not just the fear of what's in the water, but fear of the water itself. Okay, here, do me a favor. If you're here and you're a good swimmer, raise your hand. All my good swimmers, raise your hand. All right, all right, hands down. All my doggy paddlers, where you at? Raise your hand, right there. All right, raise your hand. Okay, hands down. Now, if you cannot swim, Vicky got her hand up again. She put it up in the first service. <laughs> yeah, you can't, some of y'all, you can't flat out right. You're like, I ain't getting in the water. I'm deathly afraid of it. What we talk about in the physical when it comes to water and these different aspects are true also in the spiritual. People, just as people have an opinion and a fear of the water in the physical, they also have physical and spiritual fears when it comes to baptism. There's a lot of information out there in the world and there's a lot of people on, on different versions of social media that will, will give you their opinion but when we talk about the word baptism, you first know that this is a biblical word. It's a biblical word. And this morning, my intent is not to give you, it's not to give you a, a, a rundown on baptism from, from the church standpoint, but I want to give you the biblical standpoint. Is that okay? I'm just going to, all I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to, I'm going to give you good clarity in what baptism is all about. The first we see in the foreshadowing of baptism is actually found and the story of Moses. Now, all of my Sunday school alumni here, y'all know the story of Moses, part in the Red Sea. Come on, somebody. Y'all y'all did the little march probably whenever you was a kid in Sunday school. But that was actually the very first story that talked about baptism. We missed it in a lot of ways. Y'all remember how that there was, there was all these things that happened because he wouldn't. He said, let my people go. And they said, no. Let my people go, frogs. Let my people go. I don't know, just everything, grasshoppers. Let my people go. Water turned to blood. Like we know all these stories and he says, it's funny because he, what he actually says whenever they leave, they run, turns the water into blood. Y'all remember this story? And they all run where? They run to the Red Sea, the Red Sea. They run to the Red Sea. And it's amazing what happens because he says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That was the statement. Water parts, they walk across on dry ground. Come on, somebody. Across it. it was the very first picture that we get. And what he's actually saying is, is the things that you can't walk on, you walk through. He's given us a picture of the blood of Jesus about how that as you continue to walk forward in life, that, that the sins of your past are washed away, that, that it begins to kill the things, the negative things. It was the very first picture we had of baptism in the Bible. Hmm, this was one of the reasons why that I made up my mind whenever I came to God that I would continuously attend church and, and pursue the things of God because the more that I walk, the more that I chase Him, the more that I move towards my promise, my past has to drown behind me as long as I am walking in the will of God. This is why that I make the true choice to praise God. In time, though, their praise, the Bible shows, turned pathetic. They end up even though they've been promised this thing and things have been changed and God has blessed them, they end up in the middle of a wilderness. And, and let me tell you this this morning, if you're here and you've been baptized historically in the past and you're like, hey, it was great, but I found myself in the middle of the wilderness. I feel like that my life has reverted back to where that I cannot see the forest for the trees around me. This is a picture that he gives us in the Bible. I, I, I'm quite often asked the question, Pastor, I've been baptized before. Can I be or should I be baptized again? Let me answer that question for you this morning. Baptism is the first order of obedience as a Christian. It's a public profession in obedience to the word of God, of the believer's faith in Jesus, and a testament to be born again. It's not just a public identification, but it is a process by which that is called in the word of God to identify in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Baptism consists of a full body immersion. The word baptizo, meaning it's, uh, you're going all the way under. Come on, somebody. We'll bring you back up. We ain't going to leave you down there. But it's in obedience to the word of God. Acts 2, 37 through 38, 41, 8, 12, 18 and 8, Romans 6, 3 through 4, 1 Peter 3, 21. You can watch it later. We're recording it. You don't have to write that fast. In addition to the aspect of baptism, the identification aspect, also baptism, strengthens your faith according to Romans chapter 6, verses 4 through 7. 
He said, we are therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. He said, for if we have been united with him in a death like this, then we certainly also will be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with and that we could no longer, should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Hey, that's good all by itself. Can y'all give the Lord a hand clap of praise right there? Mm, thank you, Jesus. Baptism reminds us that our sin nature was crucified and that we've been given new life. It's a big boost. When the world is bringing us down, it also reminds us that we are no longer slaves to sin because Jesus overcame sin and death, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 2. When the temptations come, remembering baptism can remind us that we don't have to give in anymore now for all of you here i'm a by the way i'm as country as cornbread and as blunt as they can possibly come <laughs> y'all ready for this the reason why i say that because i'm about to make a baptist mad <clears throat> some of the ag too if y'all ain't careful but I, 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 I'm as blunt as they can possibly come. For some, if you don't know me, I, I didn't. I, I was raised by a pastor, a wonderful, godly man who has never changed from the time I was a kid. My dad, I have a great respect for my father. He's one of the people that speaks into my life. I'm one of the few people that is blessed to have a good, godly father. But at 17 years old, I walked out of my house. I left. I left home. And I went the opposite direction. Within a matter of weeks, I was actually completely addicted to heroin. For some of you who came up in, in, in this time of the life, I, I was actually, I started out on Oxycontin. Oxycontin was the gateway drug, and it, for so many my age it was. Went from that to something called soft-pressed chocolate chips. It was an ecstasy pill that I was taking going to clubs and, and, and got into stealing cars and ended up, next thing you know, strung out on heroin. I went from pills to, to shooting up heroin that just within a matter of weeks. My issue was this, is that even though I was raised around church and I was raised by good godly people, men who really truly loved God and a mother who could pray like nobody's business, I had never had a relationship with God for myself. Everything that I had was assimilated because of attending church. It was just that I had been there. And somehow or another, I felt like because I had been around it and I'd heard enough about it, I was good. <laughs> Unfortunately, what I found is because I didn't have a relationship with God as soon as the tempter came, as soon as anything, I was, it was not me and Jesus, it was me and the church. And I want to tell you this, first of all, if you don't know this about this church, I love Jesus and, and I tell everybody this, it don't look too close at me as a pastor. I, 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 if you come to this church, if you attend this place, or if you go somewhere else, let me tell you something, don't look at the pastor, don't look at the people on the platform, you got to turn to Jesus, look at Jesus. He's the only person that can save you because people will screw you up. We'll mess up, I'll make a mistake. But Jesus is all right My job is not to be Jesus to anybody But my job is to point you towards him Ended up in this big mess of my life And I, I asked myself the question I had to start all over again I was a person who went from, from being raised in a Christian home To absolutely, completely atheist I followed a book called The God Delusion For any of you here who have ever studied Or been around atheism and agnosticism he became, that became my Bible, and that man became really and truthfully my God. I began to be baptized. What I mean by this is I immersed myself in unbelief. You see, everybody has a belief system. Everybody does. Everyone believes. I chose to disbelieve to the point of belief. Because at the end of the day, it still requires faith. I had to have faith that God didn't exist. Because I could no more prove that he didn't exist than I felt that you could that he did. It all comes down to faith. I went from atheism to agnosticism. I finally said, you know what, there's a higher power because I've seen too many things happen. And it was through men like Lee Strobel, and it was through men like Vince Vitale and, 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 and RZI, RZM Ministries, that, that I began to watch, and my wife and I, we began to, to listen, and, and God began to change our lives. And I finally got to the point to where I said, okay, Jesus is real. I get it. But just because I was raised this way doesn't mean I believe it. God Show yourself to me. I've got to know you. Listen to me. The number one thing that I would wish to God, to, if, 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 if there was one thing that I wish that I could give you today, it is simply this one word. It's not, it's, it's just desire. It's desire. 
What is it that we miss today as a nation? What is it today that, the, that we're missing as a nation? It's one simple word. Why is it that we got people 20 years old, 21, they can't get off a video game? They still want to live in mom and daddy's house and can't grow up. Let me tell you why. It's desire. They don't have a desire. Something happened in our nation and we lost our desire. Why is it that at 43 years old, I feel like whenever I bring somebody on a job site, I'm having to raise somebody's child because they don't know how to work. Let me tell you something. It's that they are missing Desire. What brings desire? Hmm. Pain. Pain. Mom and daddy, listen to me. I have parents come to me quite often. They tell me, I don't know what to do with my son. My son's lost. My daughter's lost. And, and they're out on the street somewhere. And I tell them this, and they look at me like I'm crazy. I tell them, maybe they ought to eat out of a dumpster a little while. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Y'all don't know this man right here. He and I recently became friends. Let me ask you a question. If you got to eat garbage for a living, live on the street while trying to do dope, d does it give you a difference in this? Do you have a different passion for God than most people do? Oh, absolutely. Hey, this man right here knows what it's like because he was strung out just like me. There is something that happens when you have a... Listen to me, mama and daddy. Don't you try to save them. You say, God, I need you to change their life. God, I need you to make a difference in them. God, if you can give them some desire. Because when the tempter comes, the only thing that's going to change their life is that desire that God gives them. Give us some desire. God, give me a desire. Now, whenever it all goes sideways and everything goes upside down, you know what? Whenever, whenever, whenever I'm tempted to go look at pornography, I have a deeper desire for God. Why? Because I already saw where that road took me. Whenever I have a desire to go get drunk and get high, you know what? I have a deeper desire to get in the Word of God and hit my face and say, God, I submit myself to you. God, I love you. Why? Because desire comes through adversity. Mm. Now, I'm not a person either that, that, that I don't, that y'all, some people, y'all show up and I, I love the churches. Everything's, everything's, how you doing? God bless you. It's so good to be here. Everything's good, great. And it is all good, great, and fine. But so, you know, at the end, this thing's all going to burn. Okay. <laughs> I said it with a smile. But at the end, the truth is, at the end, it's all going to burn. So my question is always, do you want to do up until now, until Jesus comes with joy? Or do you want to do it with fear? It's not that difficult of a choice. And, and God gives, he gives you the opportunity to see your life change. i got to keep moving. I'm going to stand here yak all evening. Come on, somebody. Mm -mm -mm. Is it required? Pastor, is it required? That's where I was at. <laughs> John chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night, and he said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou dost accept God be with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born whenever he's old? And he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born of the water and of the... Mm, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. He can't enter the kingdom of God. I find it interesting that the, the Bible specifically states that before Jesus dies, he makes a comment. He says, I thirst. It was a desire for water. He said, I thirst. When they pierced his side, the Bible says that the blood and water flowed. Even through his body, he's saying, though, though you are saved through the blood of Jesus, you have to have an experience to complete through the water. Now, for some of you here, you may have been raised with a different mentality, with a different conversation, but I want to tell you something. There is a lot of things that you'll find in church today that are popular in church culture that do not exist in the Word of God. God did not call me to preach church culture. God did not call me to preach what is popular amongst the non-denominational. He didn't call me to preach what's popular amongst the Baptists, against the Lutheran, amongst the Catholic. He called me to do one thing. It's to preach the Word of God. And so help me, God, to my dying day. The only thing I want to preach is just the Word. <laughs> Baptize. This word, baptizo, to be immersed. Everybody's immersed. We're all immersed in something baptized by culture. Immersed in, in, in the culture of disbelief, in the culture of doubt, in the, in the culture of I'm enough and my opinion is enough. Immersed in Netflix, immersed, immersed in TikTok and Instagram. Some of y'all just immersed in negativity. <laughs> Even in the church, 
I find that even though we claim one type of baptism, we can be, we can be different types of what I call immersed. <laughs> the first one's simply this. Y'all ready for this? A beach bum Christian. Some of y'all don't go to church regularly. Y'all really going to appreciate this more than the ones that do because it's going to hit them a little different. Come on, somebody. But the, the, the beach bum Christian, that's the one that hangs out on the fringes of the church. Like, you know, they, I call them parking lot prophets. They stand out in the parking lot. They, I got a word from you from God. They're not involved in anything, but they'll happily tell you what God said for you through them. <laughs> Somehow or another, you can't hear the word of God. Then number two, you have the other way pool Christian. They want to feel the spirit of God but not submit to him. I've seen people who've lived for God for 25 years and never really immerse themselves into what God intends and has for their life. They want to be saved, but they don't really want to change their friend group. They want to be saved, but they don't really want to change their bad habits. Just a wave pool Christian. Comfortable enough to, to talk about the things of God, but not to really know God. Comfortable enough to live the religiosity, but not really comfortable enough to do what thus saith the word of the Lord. Comfortable enough to do whatever the church says. But God forbid we have to open up a Bible and get a conviction on our own to do what God says. Mm. Let, me, let me tell you something right quick. I was raised in an old school holiness style church. Let me tell you something. A lot of it is about, not a lot of it, most of it is on conviction. Some of you here, you show up. I'm going to tell you something bothers me. I'm going to mess with my Pentecostals for just a moment. Whenever I show up to church in a Pentecostal show, you was raised up to worship and praise God. But somehow or another, whenever you show up at a church that don't look like yours, you suddenly can't worship and praise God. Let me tell you something. God has changed. You have. <laughs> God ain't changed. You used to hard preaching and listen to somebody that ain't at your church. Let me tell you something. This is the same yesterday, today, forever. Whether you came up A, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. I don't care what initials is. At the end of the day, Jesus, he's still God. He's still the one that you're responsible to worship. And he has intention for your life. Mm. Deep dive Christian. My wife and I are deep dive Christian. We had, we had a dive company in La Rose, Louisiana. Mm. Down the bayou. A little dive company down there. And I, I learned something about, it was interesting well, for, for whenever you, I go to send a dive crew out. Whenever you have somebody who intends on going deep, there was a few things that I worried about. Number one was air supply. I'd have comms, communications. I had to have, be able to talk to them and they talked to me. They were always tethered to the surface, number one. And number two, let me tell you something else. They all had to have weight so that they could stay grounded at depth. You see, some of you here, you, you came up in a church that gave you all kinds of weight. You carried the weight, but it, because you, you were not communicating with God, you communicated to the church. Your communication was tied to a pastor and not to Jesus Christ. Oh, listen to me. Oh, this is, it, you, it, it may seem hard, but listen to me. You were called to be in communication with Jesus. Your requirement of communication is not just to the surface, but it's to heaven up above. And whenever you carry weight... You carry weight that grounds you whenever you step out and say, God, what is your will for my life? God, I, I don't want to just wait. I've been waiting around long enough. I've been around church. I was raised by good people. I come on Easter, God. I, I'm there on Christmas. Listen to me. Whenever you get grounded in God, the reason why you're carrying all the weight that you can't seem to shed, the reason why it hurts so bad all the time is because you forgot to step into the deep. Whenever you step into the deep, all the weight that you carry, all it does is ground you in the place that God intends for your life, and your effectiveness begins to change. Listen to me this evening. You're not carrying the weight on accident. God gave you the weight because he has intention and purpose for your life. Hmm. Tied to the bottom. A life support system that we carried for each and every one. Weight nearly impossible to carry on the surface, but whenever you dive in. Pastor, what's your point? Hmm. Okay, Matthew 16, y'all got a Bible? Open it back up. Matthew 16. I don't want you to miss this. If you got the pamphlet, it's on there. Matthew 16, bring in verse 13. The Bible says when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. This is a promise that he gave him. He said, he said I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whenever I came back to God and I said, okay, God, there's got to be something here. And I, I proved to myself that the Bible was not only, it was not only historically correct, but it was, it was correct in literature. 
I got to this point and I said, okay, God, you've got to show me. Brandon's got to know. Not what mom and daddy said. Not what, this, not what the SBC school said. Not what the Lutheran school that I attended said. God, I got, you got to show me through your word. What does this mean? I had never known that there was keys to the kingdom of heaven. But here it goes. He said, there's keys. And he's talking. He says, Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Now, I had came up in two different, two different types of mentality. Number one is confession. The other one is repentance. Confession to Catholic church. <laughs> go tell the priest. Listen to me. I ain't a priest. You come here wanting to confess, I'm going to tell you to go to the altar. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. God bless you. <laughs> I'll stand behind you. <laughs> but confession, did you think confess your faults one to another? <laughs> I'm not the other, okay? For best friends, it's one thing, but not all of y'all. I don't want to hear your jump. <laughs> Somebody, somebody's first time here, they're like, this guy's weird. <laughs> Conf okay, confession, I, I came up old school, Conf confession, like, well, y'all y'all all heard it. Some of y'all came, but, you know, but believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 10, verse 9, okay, this is, this is the first one. He said, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. And we took that to the bank. That was the end. For some people, that was the end. of That was everything right there. Just believe, just believe, just believe, just believe, just believe. Let me tell you something. I would like to invite you to show me in the Bible where anyone got up and their message they preached was, hey, church, just believe, and they went home. No, they, there was always a, re there was an aspect of repentance, of turning around, and not, we're not talking sorrow. <laughs> I see people sometimes, they're like, I repented. And they go, they, they consider repentance just crying. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. And they wake up the next morning and do the same thing. I'm like, no, you felt bad for what you did. You didn't repent. There's a difference in repentance and, and just feeling horrible about the, the, you being a bad person. Come on, somebody. I don't know how to put that. But confess, he started confession, and then he goes, Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. I read that, and I was like, mm. Like, I already got the believe part. Now you tell him I got to be baptized. Believes and is baptized. And then I got to Acts chapter 19, verse 1 through 2. And he said, and it came to pass while Apollos was at Corinth. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. Finding certain disciples, he said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Hmm. He said to them, we haven't even heard whether there be any ghost. He said, what ghost? What you talking about? He said unto them, he said unto what were you baptized? They said unto John's baptism. By the way, you asked the question whether or not you can be rebaptized. Pastor, I've been baptized before. I've been baptized in a different way. Here's a biblical example. We were baptized into John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. The Bible says when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them. They spake in tongues, the Bible says, and they began to prophesy. I felt convicted. And I felt conflicted. The reason why I felt conflicted was simply this. There's three different things. We got believe. We got believe and be baptized. And then we have repent, be baptized, be filled with the Holy Ghost. And you do the la, la, la thing at the end. I was like, I'm not cool with this, God. Like, explain something to me. Now, coming from a very analytical mind... I want to know what's the evidence. Somebody other than me, I'm sure, has been to court and sat in front of a judge. I've received stripped sunshine before. Y'all get that later. <laughs> but I learned something being in court. You talk to a judge, right? Where do you get your information from? What does he consider true? So I went back and I said, okay, we have one who says declare with your mouth. Just believe. One who says believe and be baptized. The other one says repent, baptize. Let's look at this in a court case. The first one, declare with your mouth, believe. That was Paul. You see, Paul didn't walk with Jesus, but he was beheaded for proclaiming he was the Messiah. Never walked with Jesus. Number two, you have Mark. Hmm. Mark walked with Paul. He walked with Paul. Not a direct disciple of Jesus. Believe and is baptized. So I said, God, what about this last one? This is Peter. Peter's the one, he said, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. You see, if you carried all three into a courtroom and they said, I want to introduce you to Paul. I want to introduce you to Mark. And I want to introduce you to Peter. He would say, well, what do you know? Well, I walked with him. Okay, what about you? Well, I heard about him. I believed it so much I was willing to die for him. What about you? Well, I walked with him who heard about it. He said, y'all go away. 
You see, there's a such thing as sanctification. And whenever I got to this point, I realized all of a sudden that God had begun to grow these men. By the way, the same man that made this statement changed his statement. If you look in the book of Acts, after the Acts, the second chapter, you will find where all of a sudden he begins to show more because he was sanctified. Listen to me this morning. I'm simply telling you this. If you've been raised in a church that tells you that baptism is not required, you've been raised in something that's religious and not biblical. Because whenever I read into research the Word of God, I find the one who walked with Jesus, who was the closest to Jesus, he said, you've got to repent. You've got to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm, can we touch that for just a second? I'm out of time, but I'm going to tell you this right quick. Most of y'all here came up in a church, baptized in Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I call them the titles because I'm a father, I'm a son, and I have a spirit. But it says baptizing them in the name, N-A-M-E. Now, my mother was an English Nazi. Them's names. What is the name of the father? What is the name of the son? What is the name of the Holy Spirit? So I began to do some research. I said, God, show me. What is this? And I looked and I found the same men of which that he told to go baptize them in the name of the father. They went and they baptized. Every, matter of fact, I'll make, I'll make a deal with anybody here. If anybody here can show me in the Bible where someone was actively baptized in anything, especially in the titles, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, $1,000, I'll write you a check directly after church. Let me tell you why. It doesn't exist in the Bible. It was only done one way. All power given under what? It's at the name of Jesus that every knee should bow and that every tongue will confess. Why does it matter? Because there's only one. There's one who sits upon the throne. His name is Jesus. Listen to me. There is power in the name of Jesus. All across the house, would you stand with me? I love this scripture so much. What were you baptized? He said, under John's baptism. And said, Paul, verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized, he said, in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, he spake in tongues and prophesied. Hmm. What about this guy, Peter? Acts 2, 36 through 41. Peter stands up and he makes this comment. The one who had the keys to the kingdom, which by the way, if you look in Acts the first and second chapter, you will find that Jesus, the mother of Mary, was here. Jesus made sure that his own mama was there when he made this comment. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, the Bible says they were pricked in their heart, and they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said unto them, hmm, Repent. He said, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So he continued on. He said, for the promise is unto you and your children, all that are afar off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Hmm. Then they that gladly received his word, the Bible said, were baptized. Hmm. The same day there was added unto them three thousand souls pastor what's in the water let me tell you what's in the water y'all ready for this a brand new you <laughs> a brand new use what's in the water a brand new use what's in the water hey pastor i didn't come for listen to a brand new you is what's in the water mm. do me a favor all across the house if you would bow your heads for just a moment i'm gonna pray I know that some of you here came this morning with intention of getting baptized, but some of you here, you showed up just to watch somebody else get baptized. Some of you here, you came, you're not sure what you're supposed to do. You, God, I don't know if you're calling me to do this or not. And some of you here, you were raised in church and you're like, God, I haven't, I haven't really lived for you. You've walked through baptism, but you stood in the wilderness for so long. Mm. Some of you here, you've questioned your salvation. Let me tell you something. You, there is no reason for you to leave this building today. There is absolutely no reason for you to leave this building today ever questioning whether or not you were saved, whether or not you can go to heaven. Hey, it's simply this. You just say, God, I repent. God, forgive me of my sins, God. I, I don't want to just feel sorry to the point that I cry about them, but God, I want to turn around and walk the other way, God. I'm going the other direction, Lord. No more am I going tomorrow morning when I wake up, God. There's some things I'm going to get rid of, Jesus, because I repent. I I ask you to forgive me, God, of my sins, Lord. Change me, Lord. 
in obedience to his word. Let me tell you something. Whenever you get out of here, we're going to walk outside. If you didn't bring clothes, we got clothes for you. If you're worried about, I didn't bring a towel, we got a towel for you. We got shirts, we got shorts. We'll put something on you. You can go out and get baptized today. God, in order, obedience to your word. Listen to me. I can't give you the Holy Ghost. But the Bible says if you repent and you're baptized in his name, he says, he says, there's a gift that's waiting on you all across the house, whether you're comfortable or not. It may be kind of awkward for some of you, but would you, would you just lift your hands for just a moment? Heavenly Father, I pray over every single person in this building, God. There are some here, God. They haven't known you in a long time, God, and they can feel your presence for the first time in so long, God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would anoint them right now. God, if they would repent, God, that you would fill them with your spirit, God. Let their life be changed forever, I pray, in the name of Jesus. For just a moment, would you just look your head towards heaven and just talk to him for just a moment, only just for a few seconds. We love you, Jesus. God, forgive me of my sins. Wash me, Lord. Make me whole, God. Make me clean, Jesus. In the name of Jesus.